Donnie and Dolly. The team is supported by ableauctions.ca. Closing your business, we can help. It is Wednesday. All of our guests today brought to you by our title sponsor, Jeremy Dodd and Company, Able Auctions, ableauctions.ca. More on them later. Delaney's okay, Tyron Langley inbox. Creed from East Van, fan of yours, Rick. I think Rick has a right to be upset about the lack of respect the Canucks big dogs get outside of the market. He, Rick, represents the angst of Canucks Nation really well. Creed and East Van. You got a fan there, Rick. Good guy, Creed. Always liked him. Brandon Bachelor joins us now, voice of the Canucks on Sportsnet 650. Canucks hosting Arizona tonight as the playoffs near. Brendan, thanks for doing this. Short notice for you, and we appreciate that. Uh, appreciate this. How are you? I'm well, guys. No worries. How are you? V- very good. Do we know if uh, Archer Seelovs is going to get the start tonight? Uh, Casey to Smith, do we know? We don't yet. Uh, the team is going to take to the ice for an optional morning skate here at Rogers Arena in the next 10 minutes or so. Uh, I can say that Thatcher Demko was out early doing some work with Ian Clark, so that is uh, good news as he continues to try and get back here. But uh, we'll have news on the starting goaltender probably in the next 15, 20 minutes, I would guess. Rick Tockett wasn't letting a whole a, a lot out uh, yesterday when it comes to Thatcher Demko, but gut feeling best guess, uh, Brandon, as to when he uh, might return, of course, the big game Saturday against Edmonton. Yeah, you would hope uh, maybe be Saturday. If not, then uh, you would imagine he might be available for the final two games of the regular season next week at home to Calgary and in Winnipeg. But I think the the indication right now is that, you know, it's trending in the right direction. He basically took part in the whole practice yesterday. I think it was a a 32 minute practice Mm -hmm. as Kevin Woodley clocked it and he was out there for 27 minutes of it. Mm -hmm. So that's a good sign. You know, he didn't look too limited in his mobility or anything like that. So uh, the hope I would imagine is Saturday and if not, then next week. Brennan, uh, just listening to Rick Tockett speak, what do you think his opinion of is of Arthur Silas versus Casey DeSmith, who hasn't been as effective lately as he was earlier in the season? Yeah, I think right now he's he's riding the hot hand to a certain extent. And, you know, the one thing I will say is Casey DeSmith did a lot of extra work after practice yesterday. So that could indicate a Shilov start tonight just because uh, you're not going to put your starting goaltender through the ringer and, and a bunch of extra work a day before a start. So, you know, that might provide a hint as to what he might be doing tonight. But look, he's talked about he doesn't think Shilovs is too big for this moment. He's already had the experience at the World Championships last year. He's won all three games he's gone into in the NHL this year and late in the season when you're trying to have your team trend in the right direction and you need points to try and lock up the division it's more about who you trust more in that moment and we'll get the official news shortly um but you know all indications at least from the way they've managed things this week is that Arthur Shilovs is that guy that they trust right now uh, Brandon Connor Garland, boy, what a game the other night! Uh, fans yeah. chanting his name, goes to the front of the net. He, he's screening on goals. He's driving play. Boy, he's fun to watch right now. He is, and you know it's such a great story too. From you know not just where things were at the start of this season to now, yeah. Yeah. but also you know, uh, passed through the draft the first time, fifth round pick, you know, had to work his way up uh, to even get to this point in the NHL. And now he's, you know, at this point, a legitimate top six forward on one of the top teams in the league heading into the playoffs and a very important part of, of what they've been able to do this year and how they've been able to drive play. So you love the story. You love uh, his ability to protect the puck. I think that's maybe the most impressive mm. thing for me is as a small guy, you know, someone will be in a battle with him on the end boards and he just always manages to wriggle free to get loose to, you know, skate away with the puck and create a play. And, you know, I think that's a big credit to the kind of game he plays and the hard areas he's willing to go to on the ice. All right, Lindholm, uh, he could be the X factor here uh, heading into the playoffs. Um, He says he's close, day to day. If he comes back, he wants to play center. He doesn't want to play on the wing. He wants to be that third-line center. Um, He could be an important piece down the stretch here, Brennan. Absolutely, Uh, especially if he can, you know, improve his form from the way that 
Uh, he had been playing prior to going out with the injury. And, you know, we don't really know the truth about how much of his play was impacted by that injury and how much of it was just some of the struggles that he's had throughout this year, even before he arrived in Vancouver. But, you know, he could help the penalty kill, which has been struggling lately. He's 60 percent on the draws since arriving in Vancouver. So a guy that can win you a key face off if you're protecting a lead late in a game or trying to score a goal to tie a game. Um, and yeah, I, I, I think Rick Tockett probably would agree with Lindholm that the best spot for him will be down the middle. So it'll be interesting to see if Lindholm comes back, whether that's tonight or in the next handful of games, what that does to the line combinations and how Rick Tockett might juggle things, getting him back into the lineup. But make no mistake about it. He could be an X factor, even if it's not from a point production standpoint. Hmm he could be a very important player for them down the lineup, which I know is not necessarily what people expected when they gave up all those assets at the trade deadline to get him. But, you know, in an important playoff game, a key face-off win at a key time or a key block shot on a penalty kill can be as important as a goal. And those are the kind of things that you know Lindholm will bring at the very least, even if the production doesn't tick up. Uh, Brennan, sticking uh, with that, you've seen him play more than we have. Do you honestly believe there's more to uh, Lindholm's game than what people in Vancouver have seen so far with him as a guy? Yeah, yeah I, I think he's got another level to get to. And again, yeah. how much of that is because of the injury and how much of that is just because of him struggling this year remains to be seen. But, you know, I can remember calling all those games a few years ago when he was on the top line of the Flames and was burning the Canucks on what seemed like a nightly basis and scoring goals and setting up goals. So you know that he has more of that in him. It's whether they can get it out of him and whether he can, you know, step to that next level. But that's what the postseason is all about, right, is guys finding another level and finding a way to impact the game in some way or another. And it wouldn't surprise me if Elias Lindholm still has a, a story to tell and a big part of this story to play for the Canucks before things are done at the end of the year. And, and, and one more, Brandon, before we let you go, how significant, significant do you think the win over Vegas was, their first win over a playoff-bound uh, team in a significant amount of time? Yeah, it was the Demko's last game was the last time they beat the yeah. playoff team, March 9th against Winnipeg. Winnipeg. So um, I think it's big for them at this time of the year, especially with the way they want it to come from behind um, against a playoff team, you know, after giving up two early goals and, and – the disappointment of, you know, you could kind of feel the air come out of the building when they went down to nothing. But for them to claw back like that, you know, not just important to get a win, to feel good about themselves, to beat a playoff team, but also to understand that just because you give up the first goal or just because you go behind doesn't mean you're out of a game. That's going to be so crucial for this team, you know, down the, the final few games of the regular season here and heading into the playoffs, because guess what? You're not going to score the first goal in every playoff game. You're going to have to battle from behind if you want to have success in the postseason. And so for them to be able to do that against a team that they very well could mm -hmm. play in a couple of weeks here in the playoffs, I think will mean a lot to them. And it's, you know, another example of the things that this coaching staff has been preaching to the team, paying off when they execute them properly. And anytime as a player, you can see that, uh, what the coaching staff, the, the vision they have for you makes sense and you can actually succeed with it mm -hmm. on the ice, I'm sure it reinforces a lot of things. You join us on a regular basis. This was short notice, and so we can't thank you enough. We use your tweets all the time. Brandon, we're going to send you a bucket hat, a Donnie and Dolly bucket it's hat. It's on the way. It. Yeah. It's on the way. I'll, I'll, uh, I'll take a selfie from the beach this summer and post it. Absolutely. Beautiful. Love Sounds it. good. Love it.